Welcome to twoquestions.tv. My guest today is John Larson, and we're talking about customer loyalty. Welcome to twoquestions.tv. I'm Susan Barancini Mo. Joining me today is John Larson, the senior partner at John Larson & Company, a firm specializing in helping clients increase their growth and profitability by improving the loyalty of the customers they serve. He's also the co-author of this book, Capturing Loyalty, How to Measure, Generate, and Profit from Highly Satisfied Customers. Hi, John. Welcome to the show. Hi there. Glad to be here. Well, I really enjoyed your book. Thank you. Now, in the book, you say it's not enough to delight customers. You have to decrease their risk in doing business with you. And in doing that, you create these highly satisfied customers who are the ones you want because they're super loyal. And I love that idea. And I love that your book gave very concrete strategies and examples of how to create highly satisfied customers. But I have also read that while we marketers tend to think of people as rational human beings who make rational decisions, people aren't always rational and don't always behave rationally according to the risk reward principles. Help me solve this internal debate. In life, there are no guarantees. There are, are no things that work for, for everybody. I tell my clients, all I can do is increase the odds of success. Right. right. So no matter what you do, there are going to be some people who, who just will not respond to become loyal but I can identify the two or three things that will substantially increase the likelihood that the customers that you serve will be loyal and highly profitable for you. Okay, so, so do people sometimes act rationally and sometimes not? What we find is about 90% of the people that we survey uh, are, are predictable in terms of the behavior. Right? There's always going to be a couple of outliers, but if I can correctly classify over 90% of the customers you serve, that really increases your odds of being successful. If you try to design a business to appeal to outliers, you'll go crazy, your employees will leave you, and you'll make no money at all. Right. Well, and I think that's a really good point. Predictable doesn't necessarily mean rational. Uh, that That's right, but it, it's it's... It's the consistency. I mean, there are going to be people who will make decisions for all kinds of crazy reasons. They don't like the color of the uh, the suit you're wearing. They don't like the way you've parted your hair. But most people will make decisions based on rational criteria. Okay, great. That does help me resolve my internal debate. <laughs> so in the book, you talk about not chasing dissatisfied customers. And I thought that was both intriguing and unique because so much of the time we, we find people saying, okay, well, you've got these people on the low end of the scale. Let's get them on the higher end. How do we get, how do we bring them back? So I wonder if you could sort of share the why of that with our audience who may not yet have read your book and, and perhaps are waiting for their copy to arrive. Fantastic. Um, if you take a five point satisfaction scale where five is I'm highly satisfied, four is I'm satisfied, uh, and ones and twos are really dissatisfied, we actually find that uh, there's really not much of a difference in the loyalty behaviors between someone who rates you a one or a two, says they're dissatisfied, mm -hmm. and somebody who's satisfied. Not much of a difference at all. If someone says they're highly satisfied, things really go into uh, overdrive. Um, and so if five is all that counts, what you have to ask yourself is, is who is the easiest group to get to five? Okay. The likelihood that I'm going to get someone who really doesn't like me to become highly satisfied is the likelihood that I'll be able to jump over the Grand Canyon. I mean, it just can't be done. But if I yeah. focus on my fours and shift them over to five, I can really turbocharge my business. And roughly about 80 to 85% of my customers are either a four or a five. So it's not like most companies, if, if you have a ton of ones and twos, you're out of business. Okay? <laughs> if you dissatisfied customers, but they spend all their time focusing on them. Whereas if they had focused on those fours, that kind of like Nixon's silent majority mm -hmm. and shifted them over to five, you can make a fortune. Wow. Uh, one client, we were able to show them that one five, one highly satisfied customer, had the same economic value as eight and a half 
fours. Eight and oh. a So if I move a four to a five, it's they go on steroids. It's That's insane. amazing. So that five point scale is pretty valuable. And and I thought that was really interesting, uh, just because of my background in social psychology and research and that thing and, and that sort of thing. And, and I just thought, of course, a five point scale. That makes so much sense. <laughs> Very interesting. Well, John, I, I really, I, I like your book a lot and, and I'd like to talk to you some more, but you know, I only get two questions. So, <laughs> well, would you like to join me for an after show? Sure, my pleasure. All right, okay. Well, thank you for joining me today on this show. And viewers, if you'd like to join us for the after show, John and I are gonna go on over to twoquestions.tv. That's our URL. And that's the only place you can find the after show. So we'll see you over there. In the meantime, here's the book, Capturing Loyalty. We're gonna have a link down below and in your show notes so you can get your copy from Amazon. And this is definitely a must read, highly recommend. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.